And today, let me discuss with you the new topic of AI and generative uh, AI and ChatGPT revolution in finance, because it's a hot topic, to be honest. Everyone is speaking and discussing uh, how to incorporate generative AI in their day-to-day -day activities. And they are wondering how to apply it in a proper manner, and they don't know how to use it properly or efficiently, because all of what they've heard of is just uh, a word, a cloud word like ChatGPT, or maybe using AI in general, but they don't know uh, the real meaning behind it. And that's the purpose of today's uh, webinar. Let me give you a quick hint about uh, your pre presenters today. We are accompanied by Mohamed Rubi, who is a global finance leader and has more than 20 years of experience and multinational organizations, as well as myself. Um, I specialize in data analytics, uh, financial technology, and regulatory technology, as well as uh, generative AI usages and applications. And today, uh, we will discuss uh, deeply how to use uh, AI and generative AI in the proper manner and uh, how to incorporate it in your day-to-day -day activity. Let me give you a quick brief about the context of today's webinar. Because we also have uh, the concept or the vague concept of generative AI, we have to understand and we have to learn what is generative AI in a proper manner, and we have to know how a generative AI is actually used in order to revolutionize our uh, analytics and how to use it properly in order to build our digital capabilities in your day uh, today activities and uh, incorporate it into your streamlined financial uh, services, as well as showing how to do it uh, in a terms of a practical case study, because in Hoft Academy, it's all about uh, what we believe in giving you a practical case study for each and every scenario that you may face in your day-to-day -day activity and make sure that um, you come out with the best uh, value possible, as well as applying what you have learned from our uh, information to make sure that you apply it the next day when you go to your office. Let me give you a quick brief about uh, generative AI in general and understanding how generative AI works and what is actually the meaning behind generative AI. But before we dive into it, I want to make sure that you're not confused with the F and else F statements, because people are actually uh, thinking that if they are building F and else F statements in Excel, for example, it's called an artificial intelligence model. And no, it's not. It's a completely different uh, topic, and uh, I want, just wanted to make sure that everybody is actually aligned on this one, because I see it uh, too many times in multiple uh, large corporations where people are actually confused between uh, both of um, these scenarios. AI is not if or else if. The concept of generative AI, as we explained, um, maybe that you can see it from the perspective of just generating something, but it's actually not. It's a subtract or a subset of artificial intelligence technology that has the capability of generating content such as text, images, audio, or other formats. And we use it in finance in order to build us a comprehensive report, as well as um, valuable insights and forecasts, as well as recommendations for uh, our stakeholders based on the current uh, data that we feed to it. But we can safe to say that it's not a crystal ball, but it comes close. Now let's understand the brains behind generative AI and how it actually works. Because when you hear a generative AI technology, you don't think about it as something that it generates content for you. It actually has a complex algorithm into it that enables it in order uh, to generate uh, relevant content based on what you feed it, because it, it's not going to generate anything out of random. It uh, uses the information that you feed in order to generate the content that you want. It also incorporates machine learning technology in order to learn from the data that you feed it, as well as using the deep neural network technology in order to mimic how the human brain works and how it actually develops uh, over time in order to learn from all the data that you feed it from time to time. Now let's explain the uh, or maybe differentiate 
between traditional AI and generative AI because um, it's most uh, most often actually thought about as the same thing when actually is not because traditional AI is using the existing data in order to make predictions or decisions relying on information without generating new content from the first place. However, generative AI is actually using the data that you give it in order to build new data from scratch, as well as using the data that you give it in order to assist you with the content that you wanted to create. So it's a completely different thing because we are not using artificial intelligence in order to just give us a simple answer. We are telling it how to behave we are teaching it how to behave in order to assist us for our for our day-to-day -day activity as well as um, remove some of the hassle of what we have from our um, comprehensive and uh, late night uh, creations of uh, projects and reports and so on and so forth. And of course, speaking about practical applications in finance, coming in handy with what we can use in order uh, to utilize generative AI properly, because it can help us enhance financial decision making and how we can incorporate financial decision making into generative AI and how we can use it properly to automate uh, the data analysis process and use predictive analytics uh, in order to make sure that we are using the data that we have and we deliver the value that we, uh, we can provide for the stakeholders and the board of directors, as well as um, using it in order to help us building financial reports and use the generative AI in a proper manner in order to have a, an actionable insight and provide a, a clear vision for those who are in wait of the outcome that will come from the generative AI tool that you will use. And uh, at last but not least, we can also use it for the risk assessment, portfolio optimization, as well as fraud detection and prevention, because it's actually used in multiple large corporations uh, to mimic how the human behavior works and how to uh, streamline it using the existing uh, large uh, data that uh, uh, large corporations have in order to have a uh, specific scoring, for example, or uh, risk scoring or fraud scoring or uh, portfolio optimization for uh, uh, a specific scenario or uh, other uh, actions, if I may say, in order to utilize it properly. And also we have to emphasize on the usage of financial planning and analysis, because it's a hot topic in the financial planning and analysis world to use a generative AI and to use um, the proper manner in order to uh, have a forecasted uh, idea about the data that you use by using automation for accuracy and efficiency in budgeting and forecasting, as well as building your financial planning from scratch it can help you and it can assist you to adapt quickly to market changes whenever you wanted to have, uh, for example, a specific scenario analysis for a specific period of time. It can change based on the input that you feed, as well as it can help you to uh, gain strategic decision support. And it can help you to give you insights on what exactly should be taken in consideration if you wanted to help you with it. Also, it can help us to uh, use predictive analytics, which is a part of the uh, analytics model in order to um, assist us to have advanced uh, forecasting. Because quite frankly, when we are using generative AI, we are not using it only to assist us in historical data, but we also can use it in order to um, uh, forecast and uh, try to uh, predict what will happen in the future. For example, the market manipulation and market fluctuations we can predict it as well using generative AI. And now we will dive deep into building uh, digital capabilities in finance function. With Mohammed Rubi, I will leave the floor to you so that we can discuss it with the audience today. Thank you, Ahmed. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let me share uh, quickly my screen. Okay, 
now we need to learn how to build a digital uh, capabilities in our organization. So we understood what is the importance of uh, generative AI and chat GPT for finance professionals. So as a CFOs or finance directors, what should we do? How can we build the digital capabilities in our uh, organization? So let's start by understanding very, very important concept. Because when I meet anyone from finance, they always ask me, do you see that AI will replace people or not? This is a very, very you know common question that's raised by many people. Do you think that AI is a threat for finance or uh, something can help finance to work more productive and more uh, efficient? The answer is AI does not replace people. But people who don't know AI will be replaced by the people who know AI. This is the key and the golden rule for our session today. So AI has no risk for the people who understand technology, who understand digital. And the risk is only for the people who are resisting to change, who are resisting to understand technology, understand digital. And this is the only people who has risk. But there is no impact at all from AI to replace people. Let me explain to you what should the machine do and what should the uh, people do in the finance function. So machine will do the following. Number one, machine can help us in making you know, mathematical calculations, whatever kind of uh, calculations, you know, aggregated you know, submission, uh, multiplication, even very complex calculation that will be done by the machine. Also, machine can make for us prediction, can make for us process execution, automation, can help us also in uh, any uh, warning, any uh, raising any flag, enforcing rules, uh, uh, also can help us in uh, simple decision making and also in generating advice. This is what machine can uh, do for us. At the same time, what should people do? People can work on another side on strategy and design. This is, cannot be done by mach uh, machine, right? So setting strategy, setting vision, setting key strategic objectives, that should be done by people who understand their business very well. So that's for sure will not be replaced by AI. Also, human intuition and judgment. Who can judge that the data came from AI is right or wrong, right? Who can judge that the outcomes from the machine is making sense or not? Just people, right? So we still need people. We still need the judgment of people. We still need the intuition of people. Also, exceptional handling. If we have any change in process, any change in our business model, who's going to make that change? Who's going to tell the machine that we changed our business model or our value chain or any process? People, right? So AI will not replace people. We still need people for many critical uh, decisions and many critical steps in the process. Also, complex decisions. Machine can help us in simple decisions, but very complex decisions. That needs a combination of experience along with knowledge, along with technical uh, aspects. That need people, right? Also, determining the rules. Who's going to teach the machine, right? We always talk about machine learning. Who's going to teach the machine? People, right? Machine building, who's going to build the formulas? Who's going to build the algorithm? Who's going to build the model? Also people. Now you understand that AI will not replace people. There is a role of the machine, which is facilitating our process, making our life you know, uh, easier by helping us in calculation, in building models to save our time, help us to work more efficient. But we still need people. The people who are, who are setting the strategy, who are handling the complex uh, decision making, the people who are teaching the machine. So we need both of them. So the process will start always by number one, building the models, right? Building the algorithm, building the formulas. Who's going to do that? People. So the developers, along definitely with the uh, business people and the technical people, will help will start building the models and the algorithm for the machine. Then the machine will start to execute and calculate to make our life easy, to make the process more efficient, more uh, quick. 
Then, once we receive the outcome from the machine, we are as a people, we have to advise the machine if the outcomes right or wrong, right? If it makes sense or not. Do we need any adjustment to the outcomes or not? So the people who are informing the machine, advise the machine, correct the outcomes from a machine is people. Then the machine will learn more and more. The more process, the more information we give to the machine, the more advices, the more tips we give to the machine, the machine will learn. And then we're gonna plan and adopt again and build again and again. So it is a continuous loop. So this is how the AI and people are, can work together. The second question is how to develop the digital capabilities in our organization. If you are a CFO or finance director or finance manager or whatever, and you want to develop a digital capabilities in your organization, how can we make that happen? Number one, we have to understand that there are two teams or two types of people we should have in our organization. The first group is the data scientists, the people who understand statistics very well, the people who are strong in coding, programming, developers, and people also understand business. Those are the key three skills needed for the data science team. On the other hand, we have our finance team. Our finance team doesn't understand coding, programming. Also, most of them, they are not strong in statistics, but they understand their business very well. They understand their finance process, how to build the profitability model, how to build the valuation model. So our finance people understand business, but our data science people does not understand our business very well, but they are very strong in statistics and the programming. So how can we solve this issue? How can we make the balance? I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. Sometimes finance people, when they speak to the uh, programmers or the developers, they don't understand each other, right? Because finance or business people speak their own language and the programmers speaking completely different language. They are talking about you know, algorithm and uh, very, very technical uh, technology language, right? So how can we solve the problem? How can we make it work smoothly in our uh, organization? What we suggest is to build the citizen data science inside your finance function. How can we make that done? What we recommend is assess your finance people and see which one from your finance people is passionate about technology, passionate about digital transformation, and try to develop their skills. I'm not saying to be a programmers or to, to be a developers, but at least we need those people to understand the basics of data science, the basics of statistics, and those people will be the contact person with the data science people. This is will help finance functions to execute digital transformation very well. And this is one of the most important steps. Develop the people inside your organization who are talented or passionate about digital or about technology and try to give them basics of statistics and basics of data science and program. Just basics. Just to let them understand the key concepts, the key terminology, and then they can work closely with the uh, the Center of Excellence for uh, Data Science uh, in a very clear uh, manner. This is one point. The second point, if you are as a CFO or finance director planning to hire a new finance team members, please, please hire for the future. Don't focus on short-term uh, resolution. For example, if you have an issue or if you need to develop your FP&D team, if you need to hire someone uh, to handle the budgeting process or someone in credit to handle the accounts receivable process or whatever. Don't focus only on solving the current business problem. Focus on the future. When you hire people, hire people who are talented and passionate about technology. Hire for the future. Don't hire someone doesn't 
have any technology background, doesn't have any digital background, doesn't have understand even the basics of uh, digital transformation. This is why we call it hire for the future. So those are the two key advices, hire for the future, or if you have already someone inside your finance function passionate about technology, develop them and let them understand the basics of statistics and programming. In this case, both teams can work in a very high level of collaborations and we can succeed in digital transformation. Finance people understand their business. Finance people understand the basics of statistics and programming, and they can easily communicate to the data science people and they can build a very successful uh, digital transformation or any uh, successful digital project. So the key takeaways, number one, AI does not replace people. We understood what should machines do and what should people do. Number two, people who use AI will replace people who don't. So try to understand the basics of AI. Try to understand how can we leverage AI in our day-to-day -day work. Again, I'm not asking finance to be a developers or to be a programmers. I'm asking you to understand the basics and how to use those AI tools in your day-to-day -day job. Number three, changing hiring profile. Hire for the future. Hire the people who are passionate about technology. Hire the people who have a background of digital finance and digital transformation in general. Last but not least, start a, a citizen data science inside your finance function. Put a development plan in your finance functions, especially the uh, leader, the people who are in the leadership team of your finance functions, and put for them a development plan. And part of it should be something about data science and digital transformation. We are as a finance, yes, we are very passionate about digital transformation. We are very passionate to be a true business partner to our stakeholders, but we shouldn't forget that we are as a finance, we have to ensure compliance, we have to ensure regulations, we have to ensure ethics. So when you implement any digital transformation or implement any AI tool or whatever, ensure there is no bias in the models. No one can influence the model or the algorithm by putting something biased to get uh, a biased outcomes from the AI. Number two, data privacy. Yes, we are encouraging people to implement digital transformation. We encourage people to use technology, but we have to ensure high level of cybersecurity and data security. Regulatory compliance. When you implement AI, you have to ensure that, that the AI is compliant with your company's policy, compliant with your country, compliant with your region. So this is very, very important. And last but not least, we have to ensure ethics and play it fair. Thank you very much, everyone. And I will leave the floor now to Ahmed again. Thank you, Mohammed. It was actually quite remarkable to discuss how uh, we can use uh, such technology in a proper manner, as well as focusing on the unethical usage, because it, uh, it's a very important part uh, for us to be able to uh, consider the ethical usage of any tool, not just generative AI. Um, let me give you a quick example on how we can actually utilize generative AI and how we can uh, utilize uh, such technologies and artificial intelligence technologies from our day to day activities, as well as uh, uh, making the best use out of this technology for our uh, finance uh, practices and our uh, day to day activity. Before we do that, let me give you a success story about what happened with um, JP Morgan. Because uh, JP Morgan actually had an extensive uh, case study, if I may say, regarding the usage of artificial intelligence in uh, trading and uh, utilizing AI in trading. The challenge with JP Morgan was uh, to enhance the trading operations as they needed a, 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 compre a comprehensive solution that could analyze the market data in real time and make split second trading decisions in order to maximize profit and in order to make sure that um, they don't lack the time barrier and uh, they don't lack the human barrier as well. 
We can discuss how they have implemented it uh, in general, and we can say that um, it's safe to say that they have integrated artificial intelligence technology and algorithm into their trading systems. And by utilizing the algorithms and by utilizing such technology, they have been able to use the market news and the historical data that they have, as well as the current trading trends, in order to make a far uh, decision and a quick decision to be taken on the spot whenever they have a, uh, a critical moment in, uh, in their trading activities from time to time. And what is the result of such thing? I may say that the result was actually quite remarkable because they have managed to increase the trading efficiency as well as enhancing the trading accuracy and they have improved the, the risk management strategies and they have uh, minimized their losses to the maximum that they can deliver. What we can learn from this case study is basically that uh, JP Morgan is using uh, artificial intelligence technology in trading uh, and uh, incorporating it in their day-to-day -day activity in order to make the best use out of their human resources, as well as using the best uh, information that they have from the old data and the reliant data that they have in order to predict the future and to make sure that they have a, a strategic uh, uh, outlook in terms of utilizing the data and um, uh, having it in place. The second case study that I want to share with you today is BlackRock case study. And it's actually um, quite interesting for me because um, what they have done, and of course, everybody knows what BlackRock is. It's, it's like the largest uh, asset management company in the world. The challenge with them is um, they wanted to optimize the algorithmic trading strategy and they wanted to utilize the generative AI technology in order to make sure that they have a well-informed uh, trading decisions while minimizing risk at the same time. What they have done is that they have incorporated generative AI in order to enhance their algorithmic trading as well as automating it in order to make sure that uh, the process is actually uh, has no human intervention. And the AI is actually analyzing the market data on itself. It's using the data that it was streamlined into it, as well as the economic indicators of the given circumstance to make sure that they are, uh, the system is actually learning from uh, the given events and uh, as well as the uh, trading tra trends, if I may say in order to have uh, data-driven decisions that will aim in optimal returns while managing risks, as well as minimizing losses to the max. And the results of this implementation was actually quite remarkable because we, when we look at it from this perspective, from BlackRock's perspective, they have managed to increase the trading efficiency and uh, they have managed to reduce the human error, the human factor error, as well as managing to have a stable return over time, when we aggregate the returns uh, over uh, a year, for example, their returns have been more stable ever since they have used generative AI, as well as the enhanced competition advantage in the financial market, because now they can market themselves as uh, the largest uh, asset uh, management company that is using actually artificial intelligence algorithms in order to uh, assist their uh, traders and their advisors to help their clients and to help uh, uh, those who are actually in need of their services. Uh, sorry to stop. Uh, uh, Muhammad, can you enable the video, please? All right. Coming back to the topic. Actually, um, when we talk about generative AI and the usages of generative AI uh, in, in the finance sector and in the finance world, we are um, only discussing how to implement it, but we are not discussing um, how we can utilize it to the fullest and what are the practical applications of it. We are not thinking beyond what it can actually do. Uh, and in terms of uh, the true capabilities of artificial intelligence and what we can actually uh, provide and what we can actually use in terms of uh, the, utilizing this technology, we can build bespoke investment strategies and how we can use it uh, in order to assist us in our investment uh, strategy building as well as be, um, the whole concept 
of um, uh, advisory, whether it's a robot advisory or human advisory uh, assisted with AI. And now coming to the fun part, and this is actually the, the most important part of, the, of, of today's webinar, because today I will walk with you through all the challenges that I have faced in my day-to-day -day activities and in my real life work in order to use generative AI uh, properly and how I used it and how I leveraged it in order to assist me, in order to uh, build a comprehensive report uh, or perform excellent data analysis, if I may say, or if I wanted to visualize data in a proper manner and save time, or if I wanted to use it to suggest and recommend action plans to stakeholders and board of directors. And the first case study that we have is a strategic financial modeling for mergers and acquisitions. This was quite a long time ago. I was presented with uh, two company data. Com let's call it company A and company B, just for the sake of simplification. And um, actually, uh, the data was actually, um, when we talk about it from uh, a historical perspective, it wasn't quite intensive. I only had the EBITDA, the revenue, the capital expenditure and the net debt. And I was asked to use this data in order to forecast what will happen in the next five years if the merge uh, was actually taken in place and whether it's a good option to do it in the first place or not. Given the uh, limitation of the data that I have and given the uh, tight deadline that I had because I was asked to present it by end of day and I didn't have time because I had a lot of work. So I used generative AI in my advantage and I fed it with the data that I have in order to assist me uh, to uh, come up with the proper analysis and the proper uh, uh, structure for the report that I will send to the board of directors. And actually it helped me tremendously in order to uh, utilize the data that I have to build a forecasted model uh, as you can see, it forecasted the revenue and the EBITDA for the next five years if the merge took place, of course, and as well as forecasted uh, capital expenditure, forecasted net debt, as well as the uh, earning per share dilution if the merge were ever taken in place for the next five years. After utilizing this visualization and after I've seen the impact on the merge if, if, uh, if it were ever taken in place, I have uh, used generative AI and ChatGPT in order for me to build a comprehensive report that I can send to the board of directors and the stakeholders, including the executive summary of the case, as well as the, uh, uh, all the data of what I used, and as well as actionable insights from the data that I've used. Um, I've built a sensitivity analysis. I have made a visualization a report for all of the data that I have, as well as the data that I have forecasted, as I've uh, shown you in the last slide. And at the end, I gave a strategic implication and recommendation for the board of directors on how to implement it properly and how to utilize uh, the deal in order to make sure that uh, they are not losing business from their side. The second case study that we are facing at the moment uh, is uh, actually a quite good case study for me because I believe that uh, most of us today are, are actually facing uh, this challenge from the, our day-to-day -day activity, which is multi-scenario budget planning. Um, I was also presented with uh, similar data for the last five years for uh, uh, revenue, for example, or for costs, as well as the uh, interest impact, and I was asked to uh, visualize it in a proper manner and uh, build uh, a comprehensive uh, forecast uh, using uh, all of the three sensitivity analysis uh, scenarios, whether it's a baseline, optimistic, or pessimistic uh, scenario, if it ever took in place for uh, a period of five years. And I used uh, ChatGPT and uh, generative AI technology in order to build uh, the visualization that I needed and in order to make sure that I am utilizing it in the proper manner. And as you can see, I visualized it. Um, quite frankly, it's actually um, a very good representation of the data because when I use this visualization and I use it to speak about the value 
and I use it to speak about uh, the uh, the information that I have already calculated from the data that I was given. For example, the net income I was able to calculate it, the net profit margin using generative AI, and then visualizing it to make sure that I am delivering the uh, 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 the main point to the stakeholders and uh, to give them the actionable insight at the end of the report. And this jumps to the conclusion that we actually will help you with uh, building uh, such a comprehensive report or use generative AI in general or use the generative AI technology such as ChatGPT4 or Google Gemini Advanced in our new program, which is the ChatGPT and generative AI for finance professional program. This program actually, I have designed it myself in order to make sure that you are applying uh, the uh, critical situations that you are facing. You are using the, the or leveraging the generative uh, technology in your day-to-day -day activity in order to make sure that you are uh, solving your business issues, you are saving your time, you are making sure that uh, you are delivering the right amount of information and the right amount of data, and you are actually saving yourself from the hassle of creating uh, something that they may not like because you are using the latest uh, technology and the latest trend in order to achieve uh, your goals. For example, if I may say, if we are talking about financial planning, financial strategic analysis, financial modeling, or scenario analysis, sensitivity analysis, and various applications of financial planning and analysis, if you want to build a comprehensive report, if you want to build a, a specific case, if you want to build uh, a sensitivity model, for example, if you want to build a complete financial model from scratch, we will help you to leverage it in order to present it to your stakeholders and board of directors. And of course, I will be your uh, presenter for uh, or instructor for this program. Um, actually, uh, when I talk about the program itself, I'm talking about it from the practical perspective. I will make sure that by the end of uh, the course, you will uh, be able to uh, digest everything from a practical manner. I will walk with you through uh, intensive case studies, and I will make sure that you can apply what you have learned from us from the program in your next day directly when you go back to work. And uh, the program will actually start in uh, Saturday, April uh, 20th, 2024. It's a four hour session program. And uh, we are presenting a, a special 10% discount for everybody who has attended uh, the webinar with us today which is HOF10 uh, code. You can use it in the checkout. It will be written in the chat right now. You can use this code to have a special 10% discount when you ever check out for this program using our official website link. And the uh, cost for, of investment for this program is $197 before the discount. So you can utilize the discount today and you can reserve your seat to make sure that you are utilizing the uh, artificial intelligence technology in your day-to-day -day activity. And jumping to conclusion, if uh, somebody has any question or um, uh, having any thought or idea before we present our gift today, I would love to hear about uh, if there is if somebody has a question. Thank, thank you, Ahmed. Uh, I have a list of uh, questions. And yes. uh, after answering all the questions, uh, we're going to have one winner. So stay until the end. One of you will be the winner and will attend the course for free. But let's answer the questions first. So we have a, a question from uh, uh, Ahmed uh, Hosni. He's asking about, can we use actual data from financial statement to get a strategic planning using uh, AI? Yes, absolutely. It's actually depending on the data that you feed. Because um, when you build a strategic plan, for example, it's not only financial statement information that you need to give. Uh, you have to have a, a, a comprehensive report or a comprehensive information about the company, the vision and mission, as well as uh, how you want to uh, target your uh, specific uh, company goals. All of these data will be used in the generative AI uh, technology in order to assist it to build you uh, the strategic planning. It will work with you step by step 
uh, on how to achieve it, on how to build it, and how to make sure that you are curating it in the best way possible and to make sure that you are uh, meeting your goals based on the information and the data that you uh, feed it. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, the second question came from uh, Ibrahim Sami, and he asked, how can I use uh, AI in building profitability and cost management uh, models? You can build uh, profitability and cost management models by uh, utilizing technologies of uh, generative AI, such as uh, ChatGPT, for example, because we are using ChatGPT extensively, but the new model, which is the ChatGPT4, um, you can um, feed it all of the information regarding uh, uh, the sensitivity analysis and profitability analysis, as well as uh, building the cost management uh, reports and models. But you have to make sure that you are giving it the uh, proper information first, because if you gave it a vague info, if you gave it a vague uh, or unclear or uncertain information about what you want exactly to achieve, it will not give you the right answer. So for example, if you have given it a simple Excel sheet and you told it to analyze or maybe build a model on top of which uh, that you want to assist with, it will not be able to create it directly. You have to assist it. You have to uh, work with it. You have to tell it exactly what you want in order to achieve it. And quite honestly, we have one case study in our course in the, that will assist you in order uh, to build uh, profitability uh, and cost management models uh, from scratch, but uh, focusing more importantly on the financial analysis model in general. Thank you, Ahmed. And I believe also in the uh, training program, uh, you're going to share uh, people how to uh, use AI and uh, other generative AI tools, right, to uh, run profitability analysis models, run financial statements, projections, financial yeah. models, scenario planning. All of that will be covered in the program. Yes, absolutely. And not only ChatGPT, but also utilizing the technology of uh, uh, Google Gemini Pro, for example, or Google Gemini Advanced, because it's the latest competitor of ChatGPT4. We will also teach you how to do it. Yes, thank you. We have another question from uh, Asad. He is asking about uh, the report given by AI uh, will be in Excel or will uh, be uh, having uh, any kind of editable formulas? Unfortunately, uh, the generative AI is not building uh, uh, an editable formula, for example, but we can curate it in a different perspective because when, uh, when you basically build your model, and you ask it to build your model. And once you are finishing building your model, um, it can assist you in creating the Excel sheet if you wish it to, and we can show you how to do it. But the, uh, the, uh, the generated outcome of the sheet will not have a dynamic array, for example, or dynamic formula that you can enable it later on. But what we can do is what we can help you to create this exact uh, mod uh, model or formula by using generative AI into your model by your hands. And this is the technique that we teach you because we are not giving you, uh, uh, as we say, we are not giving you the fish, we are giving you the know-how the know -how, how to catch the fish. We are giving you how to uh, curate it properly, how to utilize it and leverage it in your model or your uh, Excel model, for example, in order to uh, create uh, your goal and achieve it, but not to create it directly that you will not be able to edit it. Uh, at the same time, Ahmed, I believe the AI tool can help us to understand what was the formulas, right? Generated that. Yes, absolutely. Absorbed. It can help you uh, understand the formula. It can help you to create the formula. It, you can give it uh, a natural language uh, sentence, for example, and it will create the formula for you. And this is part of the, uh, the, the amazing technology that generative AI can offer because we, you don't have to have uh, a technical skill or a coding skill in order to use it rather than using a simple natural language in order to instruct the machine with what exactly you want. And we will teach you exactly how to uh, speak to it in order to have the outcome that you desire. Yes. So Asad, you will not find the editable formulas in Excel, but you can understand what is the formula behind the uh, outcomes. So I believe it will uh, give Absolutely. you the same outcome. Absolutely. And it will be better for you to you actually uh, use generative AI to build it by yourself rather than ask uh, generative AI to create the report directly without you understanding how it how it actually went in place or how it was actually built from scratch. Yes. 
we received another question, Ahmed. What is the difference between uh, ChatGPT4 and uh, Gemini Advanced? That's actually a very good question because uh, when we talk about the algorithmic uh, perspective or how the uh, neural network processor works for uh, GPT-4 uh, versus uh, Gemini Advanced, um, from practical perspective or from the end user perspective, uh, they are both quite similar because both can generate code, both can analyze data, both can analyze text, both can analyze uh, uh, Excel sheets, for example. But uh, from the technicality perspective, I believe that ChatGPT4 is actually quite uh, more uh, uh, practical and uh, uh, better in generating outcomes because it has been uh, live, if I'm not mistaken, for the past uh, four, five, six months and has been learning from all the feed of the people that are using it. So I believe ChatGPT4 is actually at the moment uh, uh, more advanced than uh, Gemini. But uh, by time, Gemini Advanced will outcome uh, and surpass ChatGPT4, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, actually, the session is very interactive. Uh, we have a lot of you know, questions. Uh, we will not be able to answer all of them live, but uh, we'll answer all of you definitely uh, by uh, email. But yes. let's uh, take uh, another couple of questions. Uh, one question is uh, about can uh, this AI report be accepted uh, academically? That's a very good question because um, when ChatGPT, for example, started or generative AI uh, was introduced to the public, uh, it was not ethical to be used in academic perspective. And a lot of universities were actually denying the usage of such technology in building essays or building reports or, uh, for example, uh, utilizing it. Um, and they thought that it's cheating rather than assisting the uh, student in their academic uh, dues or uh, the reports or the essays that they have uh, to create. But it was the same concept that was actually uh, said back in the day when the calculator was created, for example. Uh, everybody was actually uh, furious about how a calculator is actually making us uh, turning off our brains and how we uh, we shouldn't use it because we should be able to calculate using hand. And then uh, I I can't uh, I can't uh, recall if uh, there is only one household that doesn't have a basic calculator either from phone or just a simple calculator lying on your desk. So it's the same thing. People will actually deny the technology, but then they will embrace it by time. And if I'm not mistaken, there are a lot of universities that are enabling the uh, usage of generative technology or generative AI technology at the moment. They have started to roll it out. Thank you, Ahmed. And uh, let's take the last questions and we can answer Please. the uh, rest by uh, email. And I, I know this is your favorite uh, topic. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Amir is asking about, can the AI help in uh, you know, detecting accounting uh, manipulation in financial statement. I believe this is one of the best practices, right, of AI to detect fraud and detect uh, things. So uh, can you explain more, Ahmed? Absolutely. It can detect accounting manipulations because uh, accounting manipulations uh, in general is all about hiding a specific fact uh, into the financial statement, for example, or manipulating uh, the reviewer or the auditor into thinking that there is something happening with the company of which is not. So if they want to maximize their assets, for example, and uh, or maybe they want to uh, have a, a specific vision about their uh, net income. Uh, back in the day, the auditing process, the simple auditing process was all about discovering the hidden parts of uh, the presented uh, documentation from the uh, cor corporate or the SME or whatever. And uh, it developed over time to the usage of uh, the international standards, such as uh, US GAAP or uh, IFRS, for example, to make sure that uh, there is no uh, some sort of manipulation or bad practices is used to uh, curate a specific element. But it got developed to a point where they are actually making uh, 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 manipulative uh, fraud actions over their statements to uh, maximize the value of which that they are not possessing. And by using artificial intelligence, it can help the auditor or it can help 
the uh, person who is actually auditing or reviewing these documentations or these uh, statements uh, to catch uh, any discrepancies, for example, between the financial statement or the cash flow statement or the uh, PL uh, profit and loss, and uh, to uh, or maybe to build uh, a, a curated forecast model based on the uh, financial report that was given or presented to uh, the auditor, as well as using scoring analysis and uh, giving risk scoring for each and every uh, element to make sure that you are incorporating it in a, um, in bulk or in uh, if you have multiple case studies that you want to work on at the same time, it can absolutely help you with it. And there are a lot of, uh, 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 if I'm not mistaken, startups that started uh, incorporating these technologies uh, and selling it uh, uh, in terms of, uh, for example, uh, sales as a service or a program as a service, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a lot of uh, startups are actually providing these uh, um, services for the masses to be utilized by generative AI. Thank you, Ahmed. I believe uh, because of the, you know, we are running out of time. Uh, let me share my screen and see who would be the winner for uh, today. And uh, also, Ahmed, if you can also share a scre your screen after uh, running that uh, wheel and uh, show people how to register in the uh, program. So let me Absolutely. share my screen and see who will be the winner who will attend this program for uh, free. Let me in a second. Ensure that your screen is uh, shown. Yeah. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. Can you see that, my screen, Ahmed? Uh, let me check. Can you just put in the chat box? Yes, I can see your screen, yes. Okay. So uh, let's see who will be the winner who will attend the, uh, our program for free uh, on uh, April uh, 20th. Let me run the wheel. So the winner is uh, Dr. Mohammed Amir. So uh, congratulations, uh, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, you will attend with us uh, uh, the program on uh, April 20th. Uh, it will be for uh, four hours and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the program. So Ahmed, if you can. Us, uh, yeah, um, I, I will show you how to sign up for the program, but Dr. Mohammed, please contact us after the webinar is done so that we can work with you uh, on how to redeem your gift. So let me share my screen at the moment to show you how to uh, uh, sign up for the program. This is our um, main website. We just visit hof-global.co. And then um, you go to your um, new page, which is Hoft Academy. You can see my screen, right? Yes, we can see after this. Perfect. As we discussed in the beginning of the meeting that we have four categories for each program. You visit Next Generation Finance Program. And you can scroll down a little bit until you see the chat GPT and generative AI for finance professionals. We have the program overview and uh, the program outline if you want to take a look at it. Uh, what are the modules that we are providing and uh, what you will learn uh, and what are the outcomes of uh, the program once you attend. You basically click on add to cart.
and it, the website will transform you to the checkout page. And uh, we need Ahmed, all the attendees, they can apply a promo code. So uh, use HOF10 as a promo code only for the people attended this uh, webinar. This is a gift for everyone yes, attended you the can webinar. click on have a coupon, click here to enter your coupon. Yeah. And then you apply your coupon and it will be applied. Just fill out the information and then click on place order and it will be generated uh, to the next page of which that you will proceed with the payment. Once the payment is actually done, it will transfer back to you and uh, will notify us so that we can move to the next step. So uh, thank you, Ahmed, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, attending uh, uh, today. I see some people wants to participate let me uh, give access to people to please to ask questions if someone has any please. other questions so ahmed you are the host can you uh, enable uh, people please you are the host not me Can you do it at your end? Yes, uh, one second. There is one raising his hand. Please. Oh, okay, yes, uh, his question is already answered. So thank you, thank okay. you, Ahmed. And thank, thank you everyone for attending today. And uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you in our program next month and uh, looking forward also to seeing you in our uh, future webinars. We're going to conduct different webinars in the coming uh, few weeks. So looking forward to seeing all of you. Thank you, everyone. Absolutely. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.